So you want to be a VTuber. If you've been thinking about getting started for a while, but haven't yet pulled the trigger, or if you're interested in the tools that I personally use to stream on Twitch, you're in the right spot. My name is Kokoro Yamazaki, and this is my story. I've been getting a lot of questions recently about the applications that I use for streaming and VTubing, so I decided to make a few videos for you all. Is this the best way to do it? Probably not. And maybe by going through my current setup, I can learn a few things from you guys as well. Comment and let me know so we can share ideas. I plan to make this into a multi-part series in which we deep dive into how I use each application, which integrations I use, and how I apply all of these to my stream. So don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing. So the first thing you're going to need is a model. The first choice you'll need to make is whether you want to go with a 2D or a 3D model. Personally, I decided on going Going the 3d model route for a few reasons first and most importantly it has a low financial barrier to entry and on top of that i'm severely lacking in the art skills department additionally i can use my 3d model file or vrm and a few other applications as well to spice things up a bit such as miku miku dance vc face and vark shorts but for now let's focus on putting a model together so we need to download vroid studio to kick it off there's two different ways to get to Vroid Studio. You can either go to their website and click on the Steam download link at the bottom, or just search for it on Steam directly like I did. The base application is free to use, so go to town. Once you get everything installed, you will get a model selection screen. From here, just click on Create New, choose your body shape, then you will land on the model creation screen. At the top, you will see multiple tabs for face, hairstyle, body, outfit, accessories, and look. And on the left, you'll see all the different individual parts that you can toggle between eyelids, eyebrows. Finally, on the right, you can set individual parameters for each of the different parts. You can choose from presets or even import your own custom textures. There are both free to use and paid assets on booth.pm, which you can access by clicking search more items at the bottom of the screen. And once you get all your settings dialed in just right, you wanna make sure to save, after that, we need to export this as a VRM file. And you can do that by clicking this button here and clicking export as VRM. Once you reach the screen, you can change some settings if you like, but you don't really need to. Click export, choose export format VRM 0.0, enter your information, and then click export. In order to get face tracking capabilities for the VRM file, you're going to need a separate application. I started out using VTuber Maker for tracking, however, after a while I settled in on VC Face. It's another completely free to use application that allows you to import your VRM and fine tune your motion capture settings. To use this, you'll need a webcam or a mobile phone to be able to capture your movements and expressions. For me, I have a Logitech webcam that works just fine for my purposes. To download VC Face, just go to the website, click the download link on the left, then click the large download icon for the latest release of VC Face. The application will come in a compressed zip file, so make sure to extract it before opening. While you're here, also make sure to download it and install the Spout 2 plugin. This will allow OBS to capture the image directly from VC Face instead of relying on the use of a virtual camera output. When you open VC Face, the first thing you need to do is import your VRM file. Click on Add Avatar here, then select the VRM file that you exported from Vroid Studio. On the right, make sure to select your camera, your device's default camera settings, the camera frame rate, the tracking quality you want to use, and a microphone for lip sync. After these are configured properly, go ahead and click start. The first thing you're going to want to do when you're loaded up is to set your movement smoothing and movement range. The default settings are wild, so really take your time to dial these in before moving on. Next, go ahead and click settings on the top right, then general settings. The major settings to make sure that are enabled are audio lip sync, hybrid lip sync mouth tracking, face tracking, always use full lip sync animation, and normalize mouth blend shape sums greater than one. The expression detection settings are up to you if you want to use them. I just choose not to because I haven't been able to nail down the sensitivity settings. Remember the Spout2 plugin we installed earlier? Make sure that this box is checked so we can output our image to OBS. On the left, you'll see a ton of settings that appear and disappear depending on what you have enabled on the right. As far as the rest of the settings go, it's really up to your personal preference and model. Take your time and go wild. The last thing you will need to get started on your VTuber journey is a broadcasting software. I chose to use OBS because, like VTuber Studio and VC Face, OBS is free to use, and there are so many different plugins and integrations that you can implement directly into OBS that just aren't compatible with other broadcasting applications. To download it, all you need to do is go to the website obsproject.com, click on the link for your operating system, and the download will begin immediately. 
So I won't be going over all of the different functionalities of OBS in this video, only a few key configuration settings to get you up and running. OBS is an extremely robust application that gives you limitless options for how you want to set up your stream. All of the settings I use, I can expand upon in a future video. Once you have OBS installed, there are a few key settings that you will need to configure before you can go live. Under the file menu, in settings, first you will need to go to the stream section. Here, you can directly connect to your Twitch account by selecting Twitch in the service dropdown and then clicking connect account. Mine shows disconnect account because I'm already connected. After you get your Twitch account connected, go to the video section. Here, we need to make sure that 1920 by 1080 is selected for your base canvas resolution, then the appropriate output scaled resolution for the broadcast. Depending on your current hardware and network speeds, you can choose which best suits your needs. I'm currently broadcasting at 1920 by 1080 resolution with my common FPS value set to 60. If you're experiencing drop frames while you're live, you may need to set these to 1280 by 720 or 30 FPS instead. The next thing you will need is a scene, which is where you'll be setting up all your layouts and sources. To add a scene, click the plus icon at the very bottom of your scenes menu, enter a name, and click OK. Once you're on the new scene, go to the sources section and click the plus icon. Go ahead and select the Spout 2 capture source, and your model should now appear on the scene. From here, you can add as many sources as you like to add background images, game capture, and media sources such as music or video. Just be careful to pay attention to copyright law so you don't get a strike. Once you have all your scenes and sources set up, we need to set up the stream information. On the right here, you can enter a title, go live notification, and category, or game you're currently streaming. Also, discoverability on Twitch, as we all know, can be a bit tricky, so make sure to add some tags in as well. When you're finished, click done to save your updated stream information. Now you should have everything in place to go live. After following all the steps in this video, you should be able to go ahead and click the start streaming in the control section to kick off. Like I mentioned in the beginning, this may not be the end all be all way to get everything up and running, but this is what I personally use and I hope that this video can help at least one person get started. This is just an extremely high level overview of what I currently use and a couple of tricks I learned that you could implement to get you streaming today. I'm very new to this type of content so thanks for bearing with me as I learn how to put together more educational style videos. I should have more in-depth tips for you all in the near future. And if you made it this far in the video, please consider dropping me a like and subscribe. It would be much, much appreciated. Hope you guys get out there and kick some butt. Love you.